So my name is Jack. I am the commanding officer of the Sixth Guards Airborne Division Living History Group. Um, we portray Soviet paratroopers between the years of 1938 and 1945, um, primarily focusing on reconnaissance and sabotage. When you when you put on the uniform, you are wearing the uniform that, in the, in the Soviet case, especially millions of people died in. If you get that uniform wrong. I see it as a mark of disrespect against those people. If it's something really basic, like you know buttons or something like that, it's easy to change. Okay, yeah, you can change that by the next show. But if it's something like really big, like say boots, or they have the wrong belt, then it starts to get a little bit, you know, it gets a little bit irritating and it is disrespectful. So it is extremely important to try and get as authentic as you possibly can. The gun alone was 325 pounds. All of this uniform together would be about 250, 300. Um, all in all, with all of my kit I've bought, which is enough to probably equip five soldiers, um, is probably about 6,000 pounds. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I'm not. <laughs> I was speaking to a friend of mine the other day and he was saying that it's interesting how you know he does reenactment as an escapism but I was saying that if I could do it I would do that as my job you know I, I, I live and breathe you know living history and reenactment. It's all about getting into the mindset and thinking about how you would tackle the problems of a soldier at the time with the tools that he'd have at his disposal. The main thing is that you have to understand that it, it's history and that it's people and that's probably the most important thing about history that a lot of people forget is that it is real people that have experienced it, fought, died, lived, you know, worked, sat around a campfire, having drinks, having a laugh, things like that. So it's, I'd say those are probably the most important things to remember. When I first started, I was, incredibly shy. I only knew a couple of people in the group that I'd spoke to online like a year previous. Um, so I didn't really want to talk to anyone, didn't want to interact, didn't want to do any of the physical exercises. Uh, and that carried on for about a year and a half. And then after that, I just started, it just started to build my confidence. I felt comfortable around people. I made, I made new friends. Um, and it just gave me a new, new perspective um, of everything. So uh, my name's Francesca, but most people call me Frankie. At the moment, I portray Soviet female sniper. Snipers are sort of a, a force multiplier, so they really hide and just take out pretty much as many people as they can. We did an experiment uh, a couple of years ago um, at an event, uh, and I was up in a tree, and I managed to take out 16 people and no one saw me. I actually met my husband reenacting. Um, I had been reenacting with the Second Guards for about a year, um, and he's he'd been reenacting since he was sort of about seven. Um, he'd he'd been doing it for sort of years and years, and we were at a reenactment event together. Um, we we just got chatting and dancing, and then yeah, now uh, four years later, we're married, got a house, got three cats. Um, We've got one, one room in our house that's uh, completely dedicated to our, our World War II reenacting kit. So we have sort of Soviet, uh, US Marine Corps, First Special Service Force, Airborne, um, M43 and Armoured, his US Navy uniform, his American officer's uniform. And these are our, um, our cake toppers. That's what we were wearing when uh, Ben and I met. We have lots of US stuff. Um, I mean, Ben's been sort of reenacting US since, since the sort of mid 90s. So for me, when I started reenacting, it was the camaraderie. 
it's the friendships that I was missing from the military and from before the military that I just wasn't having in civilian life. With the reenactment battle, it's very linear. Everyone needs to see what's going on. It, the reality of it is, when you're operating in areas like this, which I have operated in areas like this and denser, you can't see what's going on. You, you don't know where the enemy's firing from. But your first response is to just, just aim and shoot in that direction. You don't get that in reenactment. As a child, I never understood that. A battle reenactment that you watch at a public event, or, you know, even the private events, they are nothing like real combat, because at the end of the day, you all, you all gather around a campfire, you have a beer. You, you don't do that. You know, I have come back from operations where I've had to wash mine and my own, my friends and my own blood off of my uniform before I could go out on patrol the next day, or even, in one case, that night. You don't get that at reenactments. And I went into the army as a very naive young person, having gone to these reenactments, expecting, thinking I knew what to expect. But you never, ever do. So for me, I think as long as we do everything correctly, the uniform, we respect their memory, their, the fact that they gave, in some cases, their lives um, during the conflict, I think as long as we do it respectfully, I feel that they would look at us and, and think, wow, I'm really glad they're doing that for us. You know, that they're keeping our memory alive. Um, I would like to think that they are looking down at us and thinking, thank you for not forgetting. <laughs>